wine and milk are the most sensitive liquid. It's pretty boring. That's why these kids are not looking to be there anymore in the system. Where's the high Wallerstein? The Reiner Levrocher. Everything has to be done in house. One of the biggest giants in Chinuch. I remember that tattoo. Whenever I ask for more, he says, no, you have to earn that in this place. At the end of the day, you make cheese out of it and you sell it as a commercial product. What is the difference between the cheese that we all see in the supermarkets? A good burger comes from a prime piece of beef. So one of them... <laughs> Hi, and welcome again to Let's Talk Tachlis. We appreciate you being with us to watch and join our beautiful program. Today we have a very unique and special guest in our studio, Mr. Jacob Yanki Yaakov Yanki Shechter. Um, soon you'll find out, as I always tell you, why it's so unique and special to have him here. Um, so let's get going. Yanki, hi. Hi, Gitevoch. Gitevoch, it's Master Shabbos. And I like to challenge my guests and ask them why are they here? Why are you here? Yeah, I think it's very simple. You ask me if I want to be here, the answer is probably no. <laughs> but, you know, Aaron, you a long, long, long time friend. I mean, we're going back to. Uh, I said the late 80s Correct. and uh, you know you're doing something new a lot of time, right when you know sometimes I do ventures and stuff for this I get you involved I send it to you to your comment so I guess you uh, picked I, me up to uh, up to pick you. one of your guests uh, to do that so so, so we, I'll try my best yeah before we go forward I want to share with the audience a very interesting little story I had with Yankee. Um, two years ago, Hanukkah, as you know, we all do some big, nice Hanukkah events with our families. We want to create harmony and love and simcha in the family. So usually each family has one night that they gather all the kids and they make a big event. And two years ago before Hanukkah, I get, during Hanukkah, I get a phone call from Yankee. He says, Mr. B, I need you tonight, emergency. I said, one minute, it's Hanukkah, I have my plans, I have to check my calendar, check with my wife, what happens? He says, do me a favor, try to make it be in my house tonight, after tending, whenever, 8.30, 9 o'clock. I know usually when Yanki invites me, it's a pace to go. Anyway, to make a long story short, to make an amazing story short, Yanki and his wife have a very beautiful custom in the Hanukkah party, they create a contest, a cooking contest between all the married children. And each of the couples is investing a lot of creativity and time and resources, whatever they can, to come up with a very, very unique dish. And Yankee asked me and my wife to come over to the meal and join the family and be the judges which of the couples, which one of the, which couple should be the winner and should be, should be getting the reward. Let me tell you, this was a one of a kind event to see the, the chemistry between the family. It was beautiful to see. It was not a fight. It was a beautiful event. Everyone was happy to see the other person's successes and, and achievements. It was really, really unique, amazing, amazing event. By the end, we had to choose, unfortunately, only one winner. Oh, we had three categories. Yeah, we had three categories. We had presentation, we had taste, and we had a freshness or something like this. What was the third? It was creativity, taste, uh, and presentation. All right, creativity, taste, and it was a very difficult challenge because they were all amazing. And we chose my wife and I had our own little notes and we wrote the details and we happens to be we both came 90% to the same conclusions and when I asked Yankee after the event so what prize is the couple getting for winning so he told me something amazing he's sponsoring for this couple a culinary course correct a professional course to invest and improve yeah, their knowledge, the talent, uh, the, the talent, to develop. 
So obviously we're dealing here with a person who is into bringing out the best in human beings and seeking the talents and making not lemonade out of lemon, but making lemon out of lemonade. So we're going to talk to him about a few adventures that he's involved with. Um, I'm going to start by asking you a very simple question. As you said in the beginning, it's really you are, you are, the, you are the guest. I'm talking a little too much, but I'll give you soon the microphone, the podium. I asked you in the beginning, you, as you said in the beginning, that we know each other for many years. And I really want to go back to the beginning of time. And I want to tell the audience before I ask this question that Yankee is an entrepreneur in the field of farming. Very surprising. Soon you'll hear some more details, but he's, he has his own, he took his own ideas and creativity and he put it into action. And he has a very unique farm upstate New York in which he's doing beautiful and amazing new things. So my question to you would be, what takes an Israeli young man, a boy that comes from a very special family from Israel, a very known famous Shechta family in Bnei Brak, a wealthy family, a chesed family, and maybe you should talk a little a word or two about your family, about your background, about your father and parents, and what brings you to become an entrepreneur in the farming industry? Come on. Um, oh, I mean, that was a, a, a question that requires, I think, a more than one uh, podcast. podcast. Yeah. Okay. But Listen, I'll try. If you do well, we'll invite you for more. Oh, thank you. I'll uh, let's see how that goes. Then I'll tell yeah. you if I want to continue. Um, yeah, it's a it's a good question, and and uh, interestingly, I tell you. I'll try to make it very brief because, you know, uh, I can put you uh, 30 some years, so we, maybe I should say close to 40 in, in uh, how long, 45 minutes, we're gonna, right. that's uh, gonna be pretty boring. Um, if I go back to, like you said at the start, what brings me uh, from a family like this, I think this is probably what dragged me into it and I'll, I'll say it like that. You know, we have a person we said, Me Hashem mitzadei gever yechonanam. That means that any path that you end up going in life or any venture that you are doing in life, regardless what what you choose to be, if you want to be, a, a, you know, a teacher or a curling man or, 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 or own a business or be a professional, it's Mashem Mitzadei Gever Yechonano. Because, and they say, Bederch Shadam Rotzev Alechet, Molchimoto, that comes with that too. And once you choose the path, again, it's Mashem Yechonano, the path has been paved. plowed, paved, and, and walk along till you reach your, your destiny, your goals, whatever. So, yeah, like you said, the family, the, the, my, my father, Rav Shalom, was a well-known Ish Chesed. I mean, something in a magnitude that is not to find today with Kanaina or We have a lot of Chesed around in the street today. I mean, in I would say even in, in mega sizes. But what an individual did back then by himself was enormous amount of Chesed, a well-known, I mean, I remember when, I mean, I was 19 years old when he passed away. That was uh, a long time ago. And back then, the stipend that came to Menachem Ovel was his, it was Tovshin Mem Dalid, Mem Hey, I think. It's a, a half a year before he passed away that year. He was climbing up the three stories and, and came up and this, and he said, and we wanted to go down, you know. A good like this is a hard time to climb up the steps, and he said, "No, no, no, no. Nobody should." And he comes into to Menachem Uvel into the house where where it all all happened. was and all happened, and the Amuza Rovgen. Sure, he took him about a half an hour to climb up these three stories with resting, like you know, wow. in the in the steps a little bit. There, finally, he made it. It took him to time to take his breath, 
and he didn't say a lot, but he said that this is the, the, that Rabbi Yitzchok was a goen in Chesed. He extended even that. He said, of the Shvoger, 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 So let's explain it to the audience. The Shvoger of the Stabler was the Chazonish. The Chazonish, right. The Chazonish, he, he meant when the Chazonish, the Chazonish said, they said on the, on the Chazonish, they wrote on his life, they wrote one, biography. one biography, they wrote uh -huh. one book, I said, for this, for a Bitzchak, you can write eight, eight books. books, and it's not going to, he's uh -huh. not sure if they can put everything uh -huh. in it. He uh -huh. said, the Goenus that he had in Chesed, and said, And he said, this, this, weiss ich. this is what I know. I said, uh, you can imagine that other people know more than that. Wow. So sure. that, that was um, the upbringing. Right. Now you ask me how this is coming into farming and, and uh, business and uh, that. So I would say, first of all, it's not, yeah, I mean, if somebody owns a farm, you call it farming, but it's not really, I was, it's I'm, not it's not really farming we visit it soon and and questions. okay and and but it's a uh, and you asked me how I got to it this is I own the business it was happened to be that I had an electrical supply um, back in 2008 to 13 whatever It was a Friday, I remember it like today, it was a Friday, pretty much like after Chatzois, I would say. Mm -hmm. A boy walks in, like he said, a real goy, you know how they say it in, 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 in English. Obviously, it is a, a Yiddish boy that has all kind of tattoos, you cannot recognize that he is uh, nothing, but he has some kind of a Edelkeit in, in his talk. And um, what do you want? So he's asking me for a few things. He happened to be, I remember it like today, he wanted to make for his mother an uh, air-conditioned line because it was uh, summer, was it uh, that? She said, oh, I love my mother and this and that. And somehow when he, and I helped him out, and then somehow when it slipped out from his mouth that I got to do it before Shabbos because of that. Oh, wow. Then, okay, it means that my wife is sitting over there in the booth, like and she's watching that, you know, she runs the computers and everything. She's looking at that and I says, okay, so I packed him up and listen, and he left and, and that I remember that tattoo. That tattoo was familiar to me. Then I found out that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, remember me that I'm a builder already for 30 some, 34 years. He was working for a demo company that did for me once. Wow. I, When you walked in, you saw the tattoo looks familiar. I did. I could remember the tattoo wow. because usually when I see something, I remember it. And I remember the tattoo and I could not figure out where do I know this tattoo from. And you know, tattoos could be well, whatever. Let's not, let's not spend time on the tattoo. Uh, as a Yiddish boy with a tattoo like this, I mean, you, if I go on the street, I mean, I won't even think twice unless, he, like you said, he opened his, he slipped out of his mouth. And um, so he leaves, he, he paid, he leaves out. My wife is coming out, there's like a little, a few steps. She literally collapsed out from the steps. And she told me, Yankee, what is it? Like, I said, what? I said, did you just see this boy? I said, how come, uh, I mean, this is, it's a, it's a real nice Jewish kid. Neshama, yes, Neshama. He's so sweet and so idle and he's so devoted. He loves his mother. What is he coming into to be like that? Well, you know, this is the Matthias, you know, it's a, that, that, that unfortunately. unfortunately we have it on the street. It takes a few days by, I was very nice to him. Those kids are having a clique, a club that I found out later a little mm -hmm. bit. And a few of them like starting to come, ask for things. And these are these very nice people. They give you a nice soda. They talk to you nice. They accept you. That's basically what these boys are, are, are missing. Lacking. So, yeah. And my wife was talking to them and this, and they used to come and start hanging out. You know, I used to give them some, uh, buy some, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, this fish with the sushi. sushi. So I bought them sushi. They always got, they could get a free soda over there. And, you know, you, I, I give them a warm heart. And, you know, so, so I start like having a... One day my wife said, why don't you do something for them? And I start breaking my head. I mean, what can you do for them? And then I came to a conclusion, said, 
why should I go to that stage? I mean, maybe we can stop it before. And how we do that? I came up with a crazy idea. I, I you know, I approached you back then. It was a long time as that. And I said, you looked at me and said, every time my ideas is kind of a little weird and crazy. And, yes. But, uh, I'm not, but I didn't uh, change my opinion yet on this. Yeah, right. <laughs> but sometimes they are a little like, you know, they premature, the they, they, yeah, they, they premature for, the, for, the, for the timing. And I said, yeah, I got the idea. I'm going to open up for them a farm, a yeshiva on a farm. Wow. It's every child that is... You know, and you know, not every kid is really feeling in a, in a yeshiva, but he's not a special ed kid or anything. It's just, it's like, he's not suitable for that. Big deal. In the mold, he's not in the mold. So I came up with, a, I developed a plan with a vocational system, you know, anything that from, from blue collar trades to computer high tech and anything. And I had all the support and then and I started to look for, and I ran this idea by a few gdoilim and uh, serious uh, guys. I mean, uh, I would mention the Kosovo Rebbe, the Rebbe Vum Shor, uh, you know, I went to Rabbi Bender. They all gave me like the real, go ahead. real push, go ahead. So I, I spent a fortune of money and time to do that. And obviously you going to farms and, and look and locate other sites. I want to interrupt you a minute. Okay. Kalal Israel just lost like about 10 days ago, two weeks ago, one of the biggest giants in Chinuch, in, in understanding the nefesh and the, and the hearts of these kind of kids, Rabbi Zechariah Wallerstein, Zechreiner Levrucha. And he, maybe 30 years after you or 25 years after you, came up with the same idea. And he was busy for a few years, as many people know, looking and looking and looking till he found the farm which had a lot of benefits he has a long story of that how it was shared for him but the bottom line was that he gave his life and nefesh his heart and soul for this exact purpose to educate and help and occupy boys in his case girls to overcome the social problems and social guards and open up and build a certain level of responsibility and a certain level of devotion and a certain level of interest in life, in, in time management, in steadiness, in, in responsibility. And obviously this was one of the most amazing things that he was proud of. And nobody's going to say that Zechariah Wallerstein was a a horse dealer. Everybody w will say, it, 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 in Shemaim, in Himmel, everyone will say he was a, a dealer of Neshamas. So I really want to, I think the timing is amazing that you're telling us the story because it's really a unique way, a deep way, of, a long distance way of thinking of how we can help Yiddish and Neshamas. Amazing. So, yeah, Yezuchor Baruch, he was mm -hmm. uh, very into it. I mean, we have one, we did it at the same time you know, parallel, but I tell you what, it's a it's a mega undertake to do these things. I, like I said, I went, I looked at farm sites and this, I actually bought two farms. Uh, they were pretty large, you know, 127 acre, another one was 160 acre. Wow. And, um, and uh, trying to this, then I realized what kind of money I'm into it and, and, uh, and, uh, and I study, I study this whole business. I mean, what they're gonna do over there? How can you occupy? It? You're looking. My choice to to do a farm. A you out in the. It, it's, it, it's not the wilderness. It's it's you you out there. You have, you have to overcome challenges. It supplies a lot of work, and a lot of time. The main thing is 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 occupational therapy over here. You know the. These are young souls. Their soul is by nature looking for something, you know, for yeah, some, kind, some kind of a rest, some kind of a, a satisfaction or something like mm -hmm. that. And that can bring a lot of satisfa satisfactory into the, to the person. A, by, okay, you have to, let's say you have to cut the field. You start cutting the field and you're making like lines. You know, sometimes you see people cut the grass. They said, I cut the diamond shape. You see, they go <laughs> crisscross and they, it's, it's really nice uh, how it is. 
It gives you some kind. Of, I can keep a perspective. He's mm-hmm. proud of him driving this 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 lawnmower and and do that. The other one is like a, uh, you have to build a nice uh, pen, a nice uh, 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 a little barn. You have to. There's a lot of things that demand time, challenge, mental. Uh, uh, devotion. Devotion. They have to be devotion. Yeah, it's a mental challenge. Something you they have to develop. start, you have to finish, you have to calculate, you know, put up a list together. There's a lot of things that, there's a lot of areas that you develop. It's not like a, just a school system. Okay, you come, the program is written from, from beginning to the end, and then you have to follow the path. It's pretty boring. That's why these kids are not looking to be there anymore in the system. So they need this. Is a, this is a challenging system, and you know how they said farmers, they never go to sleep, they never wake up, and they, they say, so it, it keeps you busy. Besides that, when it comes with a vocational school, it comes with a, a school that, okay, you have to devote a few hours for to finish up uh, your high school, uh, this, uh, getting uh, uh, education uh, 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 credits, uh, credits and, and, and being and, and, and acquiring a skill also that can make you a, a, a nice provider for family. And, uh, and that makes you a mensch also. You know, mm-hmm. it puts you into a... a you understand that thing. I mean, that it was so unique that I explained it to you once back then, and you looked at me like um, something is 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 thing. Luth. He said, "Yeah." He said, "And uh, let me tell you something. I spoke to uh, big Chinuch people in in, in 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 Israel when I visited there. I visited back then Reb Chaim Kanievsky. I have a bracha. I have a recorded bracha from him that wow. he uh, explained to him the whole thing, and and he's giving me a." a Good uh, boar. It's not. I didn't get a boar. I got a lot, a lot longer than just a boar. And 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 the the uniqueness was that they the boys they run themselves, the 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 shiva, the cooking, the 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 baking, the cooking, and everything has to be done in house. So one of them will become a good caterer. The other one will get a party planner. You know, every night you have to put up a dinner, and a dinner is not you're not throwing a few uh, plastic plates on the table. I mean, this is real dishes, like you saw in my house that yeah. we did this competition. Well, every yeah. one of my kids knows that because it's. I mean, it's 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 kind of me a little bit. Right. So that's what I wanted to give over the kids. So if you put already a, a meal, right? Make it You're already right. tasty. If it's already tasty, make it already look nice. Make it appetizing. You know, and then so use some nice dishes. Set them up nice. You know, make an environment. Make a, yeah. and let them do that. Each one of them will grow up to be a, a fine balabus. You know, something a fine schmecker. A missile. It's not. It's not a chisor. A little depth. A little depth. Yeah, depth. and 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 you can take something that you would maybe call in the chinuch field like this is the trash of the this. This is going to be, you know, like I say, one man's trash is the other man's gold. gold That's going right. to be really wow. Wow. the gold yeah. fruit of, of, of wow. something like that. It takes an enormous amount of money to put something like that. And I realized that uh, instead of being busy with that, I'll be busy with fundraising. This is something that I'm, you know, from all my talents that you know me, <laughs> this is, I don't have it. You know, I already I agree with myself. You may have this, it, but you, this, you don't want to be this, in it. This is not me. And, and okay, and I let it go. But the bug, you know, as I said, the virus was already in me because when I learned that, I learned another unique thing. Is, is, is I, I studied that to the depth. I said these two models how to set up an institution like this, a yeshiva basically. And it was developed by two giants. One is Rabbi Shapira in Lublin, which put the first, he basically laid the foundation how yeshivas are running in the in the in the you know in the 20th century right. i mean you, you have a building you have a administration you provide the, dormitory, the, meals, no, the, the whole fitness, that was his uh, the, the second to him was the pony Vichiruv. now the difference between these two people is like this Mar shapira spent the rest of his life and it wasn't too long and he really ended up right. short running and collecting a dollar to a dollar to a dollar to a dollar. He spent away from home. Once he opened up the yeshiva, there's very little time in that. The point of which he also spent his life in America, but he built up a financial engine to keep the yeshiva, so he shouldn't have to do it all the generations after, after him, him, because it's always the successor. Yeah, the the side. successor is not always capable as the founder or, right. or whatever. Vice versa. Vice versa, right. 
So he had, he took a different model. And I realized that the model of the Ponovich rule would probably keep you alive a little longer and more sustainable. And I was looking for a financial engine, what to do. So I figured, you know, I studied that part too. And I realized that, you know, cheese, wine is a little issue because you're dealing with youngsters. You can't do that because it's, you know, it collides with the laws. But cheese is something that could be done over there and that could be a really uh, nice financial engine to keep the thing. So if we have milk, we have goats, they gotta get up, they gotta do this. There's a, there's a lot of work involved. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you make cheese out of it and you sell it as a commercial product like anywhere else. That keeps you the reward, that, that covers the gap that you don't have to go to collect. I mean, the money comes, you just have to put it online and, and the money comes into the, you know, how they said that the, the, the cards are, are, are ringing. So obviously, Okay, go no, ahead. No, no, continue, continue. Uh, well, but like I said, it did not mature to, to come at this because, you know, the seed money is a, is, a, is a fortune. And so, okay, you know, I tried, I did my best. You like I said, I said, my, my, like my wife asked, I said, what can you do for that? I tried, I really tried hard. Oh, yeah. It didn't work. But the knowledge was already there and like i said the virus and the bug didn't leave me alone and i was i said you know what like i said i i like to venture things and as being a builder i mean i mean i moved a lot of my building uh, ventures to upstate new york but i just like i said my shem it's a day i just happened to have that people asked me to go out there and to do it for them and i went and i used to live on a I mean, I got a good deal in a, a, the most decent hotel that was there at that time. A lot of, I spent a lot of time over there and I'm still looking for the, you know, the bug of the farm. I said one day at this, because I fell in love, in love with this, with these things. And, and I studied it. I also went like to Cornell University and I, 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 wow. I yeah, I studied over Real there. Real deal. Yeah, because once I start taking licensing and look what into it and, and how did this thing work, I, you know, I like to know the, the you know, how's the mechanism work and what, what's in, what's in it is, there's a lot in it and a lot of laws, regulations. And, I said, okay, I'll go. And uh, then I then I, I did over there, uh, but there is, I studied dairy science, and then I, I studied also uh, um, the raising cattle and stuff, which is- On the way from some, yeshiva uh, to from farming, you were, you were in Cornell. Yeah, because <laughs> it's so I, I, wow. I, I got already the knowledge, and, and I really loved it. And the truth, the truth is like this, you know, that I'm a winemaker already for more than a decade. And I learned, I, I was self-taught and, and thank God, you know, my, my, you know, product. my wines. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, know you you're product. tasting them. And by the way, when I, when, when I came out of this beautiful Hanukkah party, I was rewarded with a very, very, two bottles of very, very delicious wines, which I never, whenever I ask for more, he says, no, you have to earn that in this place. You just, you, you just, you don't just get it. You have to do something for it. And I appreciate it because I believe in working hard and deserving things, not just freebies in life. Makes us better people. I, I'm a cheese lover too. I love cheese and I know it's, I, okay, I don't want to start, you know, you know, yeah, I don't want to start with these cheese distributors yeah. because they, they're quite powerful, but I said, it wasn't what I'm looking for, you know, it's. Let's, yeah, so let's give the audience a quick, a quick um, pause over here and discuss in short what is the difference between the cheese that we all see in the supermarkets the groceries we take off the shelf and we take home versus the cheeses that mr shecht is talking about that you're talking about that take a lot of knowledge and science and know-how and is destined for unique markets and people who really have a deeper flavor for life of food that's one question the next question would be also in very short um, words in the process of winemaking, like what is the difference between a thirty-dollar wine bottle and a hundred? I'm not going to talk about two thousand-dollar wine bottle. Like what goes in to making a real, real good bottle of wine? So it's two, two questions. Both are up your alley. In short, because we are in constraint of time. Uh, I tell you what they said. The the is a the is a book. The is a book. In a, a very famous book in America, the guy that saved Chrysler, Lee, 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 Lee Iacocca. 
One of these chapters that he writes in the book, he said he used to work for Ford. Mm-hmm. So he said Henry Ford took him down to the right. kitchen, Land to the, the kitchen. kitchen. Yeah, in, in the headquarters, they had a massive commercial kitchen over mm-hmm. there. He took him in to the kitchen down, and he went into the meat locker. He opened up the thing. He took like a, a big prime steak, a piece of beef. He took him and he threw it in the meat grinder, got the meat out of the grinder, and went with them to the grill and put it up and made like a delicious burger. He gave him to eat and he asked him what he, if I, I, I don't know if I'm quoting him exactly, but the idea was there. And bottom line is that the moral of the story was that a good burger comes from a prime piece of beef. You can't take the, you know, what you throw out or the, or the left, yeah, the, 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 the lesser grade, the lower grade stuff and try to make a good thing out of it. I said that, you have to understand, this is the rule of life. When you want to have a superb product, you have to start with a good prime raw material. That was his message that he wanted to deliver. And then wine and cheese starts in the same thing. The grapes have to be grown, you know, to perfection. They have to be a good vertical of, of grapes, they have to be good grapes. They have to be grown to all the perimeters to finish up by the time of the harvest. The harvest is a timing. You gotta get the chemistry boundaries, you know, talking about sugar, acid, you know, pH, the whole nine yard, what's involved. I mean, I'm not gonna give a wine course over here, but mm-hmm. this, and then the harvesting, the process of the harvesting, the, the, you know, the, the speed that it comes in to crush, the fermentation, the, it's a whole process that you have to, you have to analyze every step of the way it has to be analyzed. Like, you know, you take a few grapes, you take a drops, there's a, there's a special tool. tool that checks the sugar, there's a, you check acidity. When you hit the perimeters, you check how this is the barometer, what is the temperature, what is it there. Mm-hmm. The perfect harvesting of a perfect product is a good start. From there, again, the labs are monitoring every step of the way, how dilute, not to dilute, bump up this, level down this, you know, to keep the perimeter and as as far as you go in the process of of, of crushing, fermenting, uh, uh, soaking it. It's a whole, uh, we're not gonna make this, it's a long process, uh, how do you do it? And if you do it right and you monitor what you're doing and then it comes into how to tank it and burl it and, 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 and monitor it in, in the, in the cellar, you're going to end up with a good product. So obviously, you, said, you know, when you get, when you do all these things, these things are the product of grape, but this has a higher cost because it comes in. You believe it or not, sometimes in the crops, in order to deliver these things, you have to go there with scissors and cut off leaves because if you have too much nitrogen on the ground, it'll grow too much green. If it goes wow. too much green, it covers the grapes. If the grapes are covered, they don't see sun. If they don't see sun, they don't deliver the amount of sugar that you want. Wow. Then you have issues with how to bring the alcohol. Or you have to wait longer for that to be sweet, but meanwhile, you're losing on the tartaric acid is starting to decline. It's I'm a whole, getting confused all these words. It's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole, as I'm saying, the growing process. Sometimes also when you want to extract flavor from the ground, what it is, you believe it or not, you can go and they trim up to 50% of the crops. You have real wow. good grapes. They're not ripe yet to right. to be done, no but uses. they cut them off the tree. And let's say if the uh, parcel will give them, let's say, five ton, it'll only come two and a half ton out of it. To make the, the, to make the, the other product. part better and a superb wow. a product to start More exposure to the oxygen yeah the so sun. that that wow. these things the, this pampering of, of growing is is, is it matters is, it matters yeah and and at the end you get paid by the tonnage so the right. price of the tonnage is this but you know but a two and a half ton will give you only a half of the liquid that it gives you at five wow. ton so that 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 and factors guess, in the cost and i guess cheese has a similar... now cheese is a different story but again you need a superb, number one, you need a superb product. The milk, milk has, it's called a somatic cell. 
you're allowed to have in cow's milk up to 750,000 somatic cells per, you know, that's uh, that the, the measurements mm-hmm. of this. That goes, that's the boundary industry boundaries that you're allowed to have in goats and sheep that comes to um, 1.5, 1.5 million. But the less cell somatic cells that you have in the milk the milk the milk is cleaner the more like the more the more like is clean is like you know it's as crystal clear from this like uh, uh the the better the milk is the fresher the milk is that's a good start after that comes the culture comes the knowledge of the it's timing it's been done and you know the, the acidification and and, and, and and coagulation and, and and how it's been dipped and how the how it's been washed of course it has to do with i mean i'm dealing with yellow hard cheeses you know so those aged cheeses those as a different process than regular cream cheese and 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 the goat cheese pouches that you buy those those are those are great a uh, so yeah the process and good cultures good practice cleanliness sanitation I mean, milk is something that can, interestingly, wine and milk are the most sensitive liquids in the food business. Wow. The only differential between the difference between them is the wine will not kill you if it goes bad, but milk can really put somebody down under the ground. Wow. It's serious, it's serious. So obviously you have a magnet to, to sensitive and delicate, um, Uh, materials that Hashem, uh, Hashem made in this world. You have a, it started with the boys, he had a sensitivity for the boys and for their well-being and for their happiness. And if I, if I can compile it together, I think it's a, a, you're sending a very deep message that you're not this common type of person that takes things, let, let them pass. No, you pick up on the sensitivities and on the delicate and fine materials of this world humans and and nature and you try very hard and you're not saving any effort to bring out the best in people and in and god's nature and to make the world a more supreme and fine place interesting uh, combination You know, you're saying something, but I, I think, yeah, there's a lot in common in this because what you have to be is very, you have to know what you're doing. You have to be very meticulous. And yes, kids, I mean, okay. children are just as a sensitive, uh, a sensitive thing of living, living, you know, they're all living creatures, as they say. The wine is a mm-hmm. living creature. <laughs> They all have. We all have the enzymes. We all have the bacteria. We all have. We all are. We all are in the same thing. And and yeah, we all. We are all very very sensitive and could be spoiled with uh, just like you know. A little too much cooking. With anything, any, anything can go wrong at any time. Yeah. But like I said, a clean line. Uh, maintaining a higher sanitary level and in the human also that means that the kid goes in a nice clean environment when i'm talking about physically and and uh, like yiddish guy and stuff yiddish and, yeah that uh, everything sh- you try to do that everything should go flawless and if there is a a, a minor uh, uh you know deviation yeah that you can it's under control and you can you can continue monitor with that. it yeah you can fix it, it you can fix it. It and, and and keep it on course because once wow. it goes off course it's wow. it's either it's completely spoiled or you know wow. it won't be a prime anymore it's it's wow. it's, uh, it's uh, it has a lot in common in it and, and did you and think about it before you came here uh i tell you what i didn't think about it i just leave it you know and i leave it through it's not it's not something that uh, yes. i mean yeah you heard the first part of the conversation you right. understand that uh, i do what i do understood I know. it and i tell you what this part part of this thing that you asked me why did you pick up a farm and this and that i knew all that i said over there there is no 
there's not too much margin of error over there. So this is, like I said, they said one mistake or something goes wrong, you know what you do. Milk goes bad, you spill it, that's it. It's in the, down the drain. It's, mm -hmm. it's in, wow. And chas shalom with kids, it's, uh, we Shem have to, uh, well, there's, uh, well, I think things, this, uh, I uh, think uh, this, uh, this podcast should be watched by many mechanchem. And by many yeah. parents, Katonti. it will be. <laughs> okay, it's fine. No, but it's, a, it's an amazing deep message for all of us to know and understand and live that our kids and our generations are very prime, like you started with the prime piece of meat, prime human beings that need constant care. I mean, a kid gets born. I mean, what could be more pure and holy than... A newborn child, I mean, regardless who it is, you know, how they said, right. the grace or color or anything, I mean, there's nothing more right. pure Perfect from that pure. moment that a, a new child has been born and coming into the world. And if you keep that path, like, you know, and with the same, like the, that moment. Devotion you, and you, dedication. You, 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 uh, you know, wow. you, you said, you want a path, you know, they said they can't guarantee, but you are really on a, path, a good path to success. That, that, that's for sure. A lot of tefillah and a lot of rachmem. Yeah, yeah like I said, you know, you have to, like I said, you, you, let me tell you something. You know, they said the, the prayer of the farmer, like, you know, is the, one mm -hmm. of the things is I heard it from Rav Shor, he said, what is unique about farmers is they said, ma'amin be'elokei Israel ve'zorea. Because when you plow fields and, and you, this, uh, you've been by me, you visited right. my, my place over there, and you Correct. saw that uh, we're putting the new facility. Maybe if we have yes. time, we're going to touch that, that, yeah, that we'll new venture. About about that. Yes. that is a very interesting a new thing that I put in. Uh, you put all these things in, and you, you, know, you turn over the ground. You spend that kind of uh, work effort and money and work. And, and, and this, and you, you plow, and you plant, and you, you do some when, when things are coming out. And then you pray for rain, and the rain comes, it comes, and the nisht is nisht, and you know, and sometimes the rain comes, but it, too much rain, mm -hmm. or sometimes the rain comes, and this, we just planted, you know, the whole place, my, my new paddocks and this, I planted new grasses and everything before Pesach, and we were sure, it's nice, you know, it's already, it's not freezing, and this, it came, this yonta the second day, boom, the everything got covered with nine inches of snow, Everything went kaput, you know. The, 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 it's, wow. We have to, we had to do everything. You saw that they did oh, everything. Oh, yeah. and, and hopefully now that this <laughs> thing is coming. And I showed you that you yes. see these areas. You see, when we went up the hill over there, yes. I showed you the grasses are big, yes. because those are established. And the new ones need. We have to get them out of the ground. So yeah. yeah, it's like it's a lot of effort yes. that you put in that you don't see in the beginning, but eventually you dive into Hashem, and it comes. Like I told you said the other day, this my wife called me up and I said, "What are you doing now?" I said, "Now I'm being a breast lover." I said, "What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean?" I said, "I'm just going in the forest now in the new place that I just finished to do that." And I said, "Thank you, Hashem." Thank you. And I said, this. "I start saying Nishma." One on one. Uh, one on one. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm, "He said I'm told I'm talking." I said, "No, I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to Hashem." And I said, I, I, I have to say 10 times Nishmas, you know, like, 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 yeah. said, like so imagine, it. imagine. And the Seder Nacht, I said, I'm, I'm ecstatic as like I had the three cups of wine and then I'm, I'm saying it. I said, are you for real? I said, yeah, I am. I said, you don't understand what's going on. And I showed you what a Siata Dishmaya that yes. I had over there. So imagine if, if parents would, 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 would say three times Nishmas and down for each child every day with so much heart and soul like a farmer does like you do anyway it's a big lesson yes it's very interesting i want to share with the audience that i visited uh, mr Schechter's farm upstate and he's making an amazing amazing interesting place to entertain and have a lot of he's expecting i'm sure thousands of campers upstate new york with ponies and rides and is bringing in a very, very new, unique, amazing miniatures. 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 Pony miniatures, right, for kids, which, and I saw advertised that this year you also have therapeutic. Yeah, we're building a therapeutic facility. Um, through, with animals. What I, I, I tell you what, if, if I may, I mean. Please, you it's say, all yours. You said, no, 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 it's okay. all yours. I, I was only So I, I told you, besides, into it. besides what we're doing over there, the uh, thing I started, I, I told you about the experiment that I did with the, 
with the meat that I raised, I raised over yes. the cattle. I, I mm-hmm. sent you the pictures yeah, yeah. of the, the Bahamas that we did. Uh, I, I, there's a few things that that we, I do some ventures over there just to explore certain way, like you know that we have the cashews with the Bahamas. That if if we can raise them in different ways, that uh, that will deliver much more kosher and Bor Hashem. We had a nice a nice success. We started. I started a new idea over there. We, it's therapy with horses, like equestrian uh, uh, therapy. And I chose to go with miniature horses. The goal is that we want to implement, it should be more and more widely used uh, horse therapy for the kids. Like it's, it's what, uh, you know, first you can have fun with that. So when we have the fun, I mean that when I bought that place, the, I have a full-size padding zoo over there, which you saw, which we really mm-hmm. built new now. And, uh, you know, it's a more new and modern facility, and it's not really... Very, very, very impressive. Uh, and besides that, I so that will be serve, served as uh, animal therapy. So you do... Some kids bond with sheep, goat. Mm-hmm. You saw the mini donkey over there yes. that, that we have. It's a bunch with it's, it is a very new concept for the Yiddish uh, Heimish world. I have a strong feeling that after this summer, when it's a shame, um, hundreds and maybe thousands of kids will. I, I mean, it's gonna uh, let will, me tell will. you, it's gonna help so many kids to. What do you want more than that? You saw that I have this book and that they come over here that I do now this 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 new pilot with these boys that they came in. Right. I'll tell you a story about it. You won't believe. I just told my wife Shabbos. When I the boys started to come, they already coming in the winter at least. And, uh, yeah, you know we could go to Shiva after that. You know Azman is the Kazman and and uh, this and that and this. I took them together and I said, okay guys, listen to me. Learning is the most important thing for me. If you're missing a cider or missing a this or missing a davening or missing a this, I don't need you over here. I don't want you over here. Right. The goal over here is like this. When you have a free time and you can have go, come and have fun, you know, fulfill yourself with everything Develop that, skills. that you have. You see, they're building with me some right. bonds. They do some work. They take care of the horses. I realize that they uh, they start taking the brushes. And I taught them how to, you know, I gave them a few mm-hmm. lectures with the, assignments with the, and lectures. No, I gave them a few lectures like with with the horses, like you know, some mm-hmm. they, yeah. they don't need therapy, but I showed them how these things go and how to handle them. And I see they come in, first thing they run to the horses, they, you know, they take Say care hello. of them. Yeah, they take care they of them. They pet them. Some of them were afraid, like, you know, shivering, coming in. The, I got them into the cage, you know, to the pen. Mm-hmm. And then I got them bonded with the horse. And now they're so bonded to the horses. They come, wow. the horses already come to them. They know them. They they mingle together. It's unbelievable. They take care of They finish with that and they go. They, they help with the, the same. This week... They came up, the few boys, they stood in front of me. Okay, this is the cutoff time. We decided that we're not staying here till the last minute and we'll be late for the Shiva. We'll be here, we're quitting 15 minutes before we figure the five minutes for the ride and we have five minutes in the Shiva to be to be in the Seder right. on time. You know, it didn't take long. It's, it's just two and a half, three weeks. I said, wow. I told my wife, I said, these boys are already straightened up. They wow. gave me, they wanted to reward me for what am I doing for them. You know, I took them on right. the Polaris, I took them a tour in the woods. And they, they, so they're really having nice this kosher is, fun. I, but they gave me a reward. They came to surprise me that they said, yeah, we'll be on time. This is quit time. Wow, I, said, I was so, so happy. Touched. And this, and then I, looked, so you know, I, I constantly looking at the clock like this. And, you know, that the chasu shalom, you know, they shouldn't be. This. I said, boys, okay, time is up. Wow. Hey, they quit everything. They, you know, they set up the, the tools, whatever. Okay, we're going. And, you know, wow. I got them into the car and I took them back. It was a nice reward and I see that it really works. And like I said, I, I'm looking forward to implement this new uh, horse therapy business into wow. the community and I think that uh, people will have, a, 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 I mean, the kids, the eye-opener, 
will have a, so much <coughs> reward from from having it. I mean, look, it works all over the world. They use it for autistic kids. They use it for kids that they're afraid of, of. You know, they have uh, they're afraid to communicate. They, they, it's a engage, lot of, engage, self self esteem, uh, encouragement. You know, we have to. They take away. To they take, take away the fears. But we have to constantly highlight and remind everyone again that from the outside, the world looks like a very systematic place where everything goes on a track and boys do what they have to and girls do what they have to and people do what they have to and couples do what they have to but unfortunately the people in the field are familiar with very very many challenges and cases by the thousands of the people that need a lot of help and we are very happy here and let's talk tachlas to bring a fresh look and a fresh taste of an approach to life that um, obviously is working in many places around the world and hopefully and for sure some and, and slowly more and more people will benefit from this amazing yeah that, look training you don't have to be locked in some kind of a facility or something like you know <laughs> to dome somewhere yeah. outstate or, or what is i mean we're doing the we're doing we're starting up over there and uh, hopefully we'll spread it very, I mean, very far because it's, uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I, we tried it on, on, on kids. I see it with other, you know, every time, every, every issue that, 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 that you can address, you know, people that. Do. And I can, I can assure the, the viewers and the visitors that nothing of there was done just just because yeah, everything it's not, has it's not like a, a lot of Yiddish. It's not research. A big, it's not a big gemacht. Right, it's not a big gemacht. A lot of research, a lot of um, a lot of um, research, and a lot of investment, and everything is done with das teure, and everything goes to the gedolim of the door that gives give input and give guidance and steer Yankee to do things the right way. And yes, some people have the courage to be a little different, to be a little unique and go out of the box in order to bring people back into the box. That's an interesting um, scenario. Yeah, take it. Yeah. Be I mean, a man, look, take a compliment. I, yeah, I, I, look, I, 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 maybe in, in our community is unique, but if you look at it in the world, you know, right. we, we, we like to be worldy. No. With everything else that we have, we update, the, uh, you know, with technology, we update, we implement in a careful it. way. In yeah, a careful of course. Way. I mean, we do it in our own way. Like you know, right. you see, we talk before about food and and, and, and right. like good food and culinary food. I mean, 30, 40 years ago, you couldn't get a decent right. bottle of wine. Now, now this can I know already is a shelf. This wine, this scotch, this this bourbons, this you name it. What you yeah. mentioned, going to be users. now. Yeah, and a lot of users too. A lot of <laughs> yeah. users also, but they, they, they can be helped with our horses. But uh, now it's going to be Metz The cheese is going to you yes. know raise the bar and, and and you know give to the amazing. To this, you amazing. Know, can I know we have the good meats and this we have you know we have you have those kosher magazines and stuff and so. This uh, yes. the ease the ease of demand for good stuff and yes. becoming more and more worldly. So I say, as why long, why not? I mean, right. every the whole world is getting therapy with horses. Why we are standing, you know? Yes. Why we are standing behind? Yeah, as long as we uh, do it with with yeah. uh, das Teure yeah, and careful a, and, and with a good das reason. Das loves that the, right. the, we just lack facilities. Right. And uh, you know, I just amazing, amazing. the flag and, uh, and uh, yes. we're going. It's a shame. I see. Uh, so, so we'll see after nice the summer. We'll see how. Uh, it's a shame. I'm sure it's going to be very successful, and it's, it's going to be advertised, and everyone will have a chance to to visit and to visit, benefit experiment. from it. Experiment. I experiment. Mean, you don't have to come for therapy. You can come. Right. All, you can come for fun too. I mean, yeah, it's open for fun. fun. And it's open for you know it's open for and we have all well, kind of arenas you know you can ride the mini you can ride the minis you can drive a mini you can ride a pony you can do down there <laughs> whatever you need yeah. and you you know you can race on a track you can ride on an arena amazing, you can amazing. jump you can groove really and, and it's really the location is really in the heart convenient and everyone has access beautiful just before we conclude um i always like to tell to tease people if i would give you now a, a microphone with two hundred thousand um audience of two hundred thousand hidden with 60 seconds what would you want to tell them come on go for it 
I don't know. If, okay, let, let, let's do like this. I believe, and there's more than believe. I looked after it for a while and I explored it. Every single one of us, of any humankind, has, he was born with a talent. In other words, he has a features, his face, his body built, whatever, but in himself, he has the wisdom and he has, besides wisdom, he has a talent. Everyone, you explore that, explore the talent that you have, develop it with the right way, like I say, in a professional way, go. If you go and you might as well, like I said, always you have, you know, these are eight hours of work in a day, you might as well use it to the best. Just don't schmear the hours, just, you know, use it to the best, do the max, max yourself out. As I said, if you discover what your talents are, your heart is gonna be there. Set a goal and go for it. Take it serious, you'll be there, you'll make it. It's in every single one of us. There's no such thing that somebody doesn't have it. The same as God created you with a nose and ears and eyes and everything else. Some people think that they're not perfect or they're not this, but they have it to the big, or they, of course. Some people have a bigger talent, some things are so small, but it's there. Find, Find it. Find it, go for it. it, develop it, perfect it, you'll make it. Wow, beautiful. That's exactly what I, when we started with Let's Talk Tachlas, we said we want to take the, the so-called ordinary people and bring out in them the extraordinary. And this, I think, was a beautiful way to conclude our beautiful interview. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, and I get the wach. Get the wach.